Hello people. Our notes for today are on the scientific process and the target is I can identify and conduct a controlled experiment. Now we're thinking what are the steps, what is a controlled experiment, how do we do it? You've probably been taught a specific you know steps to take. We'll kind of go through those a little bit but uh, also get to the larger idea of what a controlled experiment is. So I looked up a couple definitions and put them here for you. The first one uh, is a little bit complicated but if you look at the last two like those are those are the ones I want us to focus on so a controlled experiment is one in which everything is held constant except for one variable and my definition is that we just test we're just testing one thing okay and we'll get to examples of that uh, in a second so we start with some kind of a question or a problem or an observation for example a question do plants grow taller when watered with flavored water okay that would be a question that we could you know run a controlled experiment on or is bottled water better than uh, better tasting than tap water or do dogs see colors or why do high school kids smell so bad Ooh. then after we figure out like our problem or whatever what thing we want to do we just do research on that and we learn all we can about uh, information that's already out there and then based on that we make a hypothesis and a hypothesis is an idea that we have that we put into a testable statement. Okay, so that means what you actually think will happen based on the research that you've done. Examples of hypotheses, hyperactivity is related to eating sugar. All daisies have the same number of petals. If you get at least six hours of sleep, test scores will increase and so on and so on and so on. The one we're going to focus on uh, for the rest of these notes is if fertilizer is used, then plants will grow taller. Okay, so we can test all of these statements. Our example is going to be the fertilizer example. So, um, how do we test? Well, we set up the controlled experiment, right? Okay, well, again, those were the definitions of what a controlled experiment was. And there's a couple of variables that we have to talk about, the first one being the independent variable. And if we use this hypothesis, if fertilizer is used, then plants will grow taller. What is our independent variable in that example? Okay, it's the thing that we need to test. So, hmm, God, what would that be? I don't know. It's hard to, it's hard to get it, really. Fertilizer. That is the thing that we're testing. Okay, that's our independent variable. It is going to be the only thing that's different between our two groups. The dependent variable is the thing that we are going to measure. Okay, so if that's our hypothesis, if fertilizer is used, then plants will grow taller. Our dependent variable is the thing that we are going to measure, and that is the growth of the plant. Okay, independent variable is the thing we're testing. Dependent variable is the thing that we are going to measure. Now, there's a couple different groups. There's an experimental group. And there's a, and a, and a control group. Okay, one of those groups gets the independent variable and one does not. So this little beaker right here is nitrogen, that's fertilizer. So the experimental group is the group that gets the independent variable, which is in this case is fertilizer. And the control group is the group that does not get it. Okay, so then you're like, well, you know, what do we need the second group for? Okay, well, why don't we just you know, dump the fertilizer on there and measure the grass. We need the control group to compare it to to see if the fertilizer actually did anything. So the control group is for uh, comparison. Now between these two groups, everything is the same except for the independent variable. So that means that we have to have the same amount of sunlight, the same amount of water, temperature, size pot, soil, all the things need to be the same. The only difference is that one group got the fertilizer and one group did not. Okay? All right. Um, after that, we just need to record the data. Okay, usually we start it with some kind of data table, and then we will put uh, that information into a graph of some kind, and we will show you how to do that as well. And at the end, we need to summarize our data um, and then state whether our hypothesis was correct or whether it was incorrect. And just as a point of emphasis here, Either way is fine. It's not a failure of an experiment if your hypothesis was incorrect. As long as we find out one way or another, that's a good thing. That means we set up the experiment correctly, 
and we determined that your hypothesis was incorrect, but we learned something. Or we determined that your hypothesis was correct, and we learned something. Either one is fine. Okay, the summary should be an explanation of your experiment and your results. Um, like, like you're talking to someone, but assume that your summary, someone might not be looking at your graph. So you have to take your graph and data table and put those things uh, into words. Okay, so again, here is kind of our path um, that we took and the, and the process that we would go through to set up a controlled experiment. Okay. Um, and that's that. So thanks for listening. Check you later.